So a very good morning, a good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be for your part of the world. On behalf of NCRA, I welcome you to this memorial meeting that we are having to pay homage to Professor Govind Swaroop. Uh, with his passing, uh, the world has lost an icon from the stage of astronomy and astrophysics. India has lost a pioneer and a true trailblazer who set up the foundations of an entire new field from scratch in the country. And many of us have lost a much valued, a much loved friend and father figure. And it is a measure of this stature and eminence of Govind Swaroop that we find ourselves overwhelmed with the number of responses we received from individuals wanting to participate and speak at this memorial function. And in spite of our best efforts, we have not been able to accommodate several respondents. And I very much regret that. Nevertheless, uh, we have a rather long list of participants. And hence, I request all of you to restrict your tributes to about two minutes and not longer. And as far as possible, uh, please follow the text material you had supplied uh, so that we can keep the program on track. We've tried our best to adjust the schedule to match time zones uh, of individuals from across the world. So we will start with colleagues from Australia, where it is already late in the evening. And then most of the colleagues from the United States are scheduled to speak towards the end of the program. And hopefully they would have had enough time to become ready and alert after waking up. Uh, what uh, we would uh, do is uh, we would uh, go as per the uh, schedule uh, that was circulated to all uh, these participants who are speaking. And uh, one of us as the host uh, will unmute uh, the participant whose turn it is to speak and uh, at, or we would allow them to unmute and you have to then actually unmute yourself and then start speaking and we will play a file which contains your text message and if you have sent any photographs along with that and if you are not able to connect or you have opted to have your video to be played then we will be playing that particular file uh, before we start uh, with the contributions from the participants uh, we have a small uh, historical tribute uh, that has been created by my colleagues at NCRA, especially uh, Yogesh Varadekar. And we will start with uh, uh, playing that uh, and then move on to uh, the contributions from the participants. Govind Swaroop was born on 23rd March 1929 and spent his early years in the small town of Thakurdwara in the Muradabad district of Uttar Pradesh. He obtained his master's degree from Allahabad University in 1950 and joined the newly formed National Physical Laboratory in Delhi. There he began working in the area of paramagnetic resonance under the direction of the eminent physicist Dr. K. S. Krishnan. Krishnan attended the Ursi conference in Australia in 1952 and was much impressed with the progress being made there in the nascent field of radio astronomy at the CSIRO's Division of Radio Physics. Krishnan recommended Govind Swaroop for a Colombo Plan Fellowship to spend two years at Potts Hill near Sydney to work with the Australian group and to come up to speed with the latest technology in the field. Swaroop and Parthasarthi from the Kodaikanal Observatory spent two years in Australia from 1953 to 1955 working for three months in each of the research groups there under the overall supervision of Professor Joseph Pozzi, himself a founder of radio astronomy in Australia. Pozzi became a mentor to Swaroop and guided him closely over the next decade of his career. Swaroop and Parthasarthi worked extensively on studying the sun with the Potts Hill Telescope Array. In 1956, Swaroop joined the Fort Davis Radio Astronomy Station of Harvard Observatory located in Texas 
to continue his studies of the sun. While at Fort Davis, Swaroop discovered a new type of burst from the sun, a type U burst. He decided to do a PhD in the USA and was accepted at all the major radio astronomy centers of the time, Harvard, Caltech and Stanford. He chose Stanford on Posey's advice since the Stanford PhD program placed a greater emphasis on the newly emerging field of electronics. In September 1957, he enrolled for a PhD at Stanford University to work with Professor Ron Bracewell, known to many of us as the author of the leading textbook on Fourier transforms. Swaroop finished his thesis by 1960 on studies of the sun using the cross antenna interferometer at Stanford. On finishing his PhD, he was immediately offered the position of assistant professor at Stanford University. At the back of his mind always was the plan to return to India to set up a radio astronomy group within the country. Swaroop and three other Indians working in the field of radio astronomy abroad Professors Kundu, Krishnan and Menon jointly wrote a proposal to set up a radio astronomy facility in India and sent it to five major research organizations and agencies in September 1961. Within India, Professor Homi Bhabha, the director of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai, moved quickly to approve the proposal. In January 1962, Baba sent Govind Swaroop this telegram conveying TIFR's decision to set up a radio astronomy group. After spending nearly a decade, decade abroad in Australia and USA, Swaroop returned to India in 1963 and joined TIFR with big plans in mind. Mindful of Baba's words, if your group fulfills the expectations we have of it, this could well lead to some very much bigger equipment and work in radio astronomy in India than we foresee at present. By 1965, he had used the dishes donated by the Potsdam telescope to set up a solar telescope at Kalyan near Mumbai. Around this time, he thought of a clever design for a large new telescope that could use the lunar occultation technique to find accurate sizes and positions of radio sources. These could then be used to distinguish between the steady state and Big Bang theories. Baba enthusiastically supported the idea and a suitable site was identified near Uti. Many critical mechanical and electronic components required for the telescope were manufactured for the first time in India. The design and construction effort was led by a young team with a median age of 27 years. This massive telescope, a 500 meter long and 30 meter wide parabolic cylinder, had its rotation axis parallel to the Earth's rotation axis and could follow a radio source from rise to set. By 1970, the UT radio telescope, the ORT, was complete. Over the next decade, the ORT made many new discoveries in astronomy and contributed to studies of the sun, interplanetary scintillation, pulsars and the most distant radio quasars. Swaroop and his student Vijay Kapahi showed that radio source counts were consistent with the predictions of the Big Bang Theory. By the early 1980s, new technological developments made it possible to envision a telescope even bigger than the ORT. Swaroop then dreamt up his biggest project yet, the giant, giant meter wave radio telescope. An important science driver of this giant new telescope was to discover primordial hydrogen clouds in the very distant universe. The GMRT consists of 30 parabolic dishes of 45 meter diameter each. A novel design allowed the reflecting surface to be made from thin stainless steel wires, making the dish light and reducing wind loading effects. Overcoming innumerable technical and financial challenges, Swaroop and his team completed the telescope by the year 2000. Since 2002, the GMRT has been open to the inter international astronomy community. 
Astronomers from 40 countries have used the facility so far for studies of all kinds of radio sources. Till the very end, his enthusiasm for his subject remained undiminished. He atten attended research seminars regularly and gave occasional talks about his work. In 2019, he co-authored a paper on radio observations of the planet Venus, 64 years after he wrote his first research paper in 1955. On the day he went to the hospital for the last time, he was working on his prefatory article for the annual review of astronomy and astrophysics. The team of engineers and scientists that he trained have a big responsibility to continue and grow his legacy. His life was truly his message. Okay, um, uh, with the, that tribute from NCRA, uh, we would like to move on and hear from our guests who have joined the meeting. Uh, first is Professor Ron Eakers from Australia. Um, and I will now play the file and request Ron to unmute and start speaking. Okay, uh, Ron Eakers here from Australia. I'm speaking uh, also on behalf of Douglas Bock of the CSIRO Astronomy and Space Science Division. On the, uh, in, in the background to my video and also in the bottom right of the video that's showing, you can see the Potts Hill Array and we just heard about that. In 1953, Govan Swoop was invited to Australia to work in Joe Pawsey's group in CSIRO and this was his introduction to radio astronomy. His job at the time was to compute by hand the Fourier transform uh, of the observations made with this array. And as Govan told me later, it took him many months uh, of calculations. Uh, however, the result was the first ever aperture synthesis observation uh, made in the world. Now, Govand thought that there must be better ways to do this calculation. And later when he went to Stanford and was working with Ron ba Bracewell, they discussed what became known as the Bracewell and Riddle back projection algorithm, uh, which was uh, Govand's innovation and made a uh, big impact on medical imaging. Now later you will hear how uh, Govind also influenced the SKA. I will leave that to Richard Scalizzi, but I'll tell just one small story I was directly involved in. It was at a European Space Agency symposium in Leiden in 1993, when Govind came up with the plan to have a large telescope working group under the auspices of ERSI, the Union for Radio Science International. And that was ratified at the ERSI General Assembly in Kyoto later that year. That was the beginning of the SKA telescope. So as you all know, Govand was well known for his stream of innovative concepts. Uh, and Govand also believed that through doing global projects, he could make the world a better place. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ron. Um, next, we have uh, Dave Johnsey, also from Australia. Professor Govins Farrop had a long and productive career where he remained dynamic and energetic throughout. Professor Farrop's most significant contribution to radio astronomy will be, be remembered through the major and innovative radio telescopes whose design and construction he spearheaded in, spearheaded in India. Throughout his career, he was also a strong supporter of international relations spending some of his early years, as you heard from Ron, working in a number of different countries, including CSIRO in Australia. He was such a good friend and colleague to many of us here today. This combination of lifelong nat national and international collaboration, effort and enthusiasm is so well summed up in these last 15 lines of Lord Tennyson's poem, Ulysses. Come, my friends, Tis not too late to seek a newer world. 
push off and sitting and smite, sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows. For my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the bars of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles who we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Thank you. Hello, Jai Shivrai, a member of parliament, Dr. Amol Kohli. I pay tribute to Padmashri, the Dr. Gobind Swarupji, for his immense work and contribution in the field of radio astronomy. What I feel most important was when the era of scientific research and radio astronomy was in early stage. Dr. Swarup inspired many by his work and his contribution in this field. Not only he made our country proud, but also his work will be remembered for generations to come. And as a human being, despite at the pinnacle of success and achievements, his humbleness and his down-to-earth nature touched many hearts. Whoever came across him, so I personally feel that the true tribute to this national hero will be walking the path Dr. Swaroop has shown us and making us country proud and powerful in the field of radio astronomy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kohle. Next, we have um, Shri Atul Benke, who is the uh, local of, uh, member of the Legislative Assembly of the state of Maharashtra from the region where the GMRT is located. And so, Mr. Benke, it is over to you. Hello, I'm uh, Atul Benke. I'm the member of Legislative Assembly where the giant metroic radio telescope are situated. My father was a member of Legislative Assembly when all the GMRT project took up. Professor Govind Suruk was very closely associated to my family. As my father was a leader over there and uh, uh, Govindji Suruk was working in that area, the central government of India had to acquire the land for the radio telescopes in a rural area. Ours was a agriculture belt, a yielding belt. It was a, a irrigated belt. So the farmers agitated it too much for giving their lands over there. But the central government was very much to, uh, to make the project and then the farmers and my uh, father, the local politicians, they came up to Govindji Swarup and said that you have to, you will have to take the children of the farmers for the job for the GMRT project. But as it was a technical field, the central government didn't allow it. But with the immense pressure by Honorable Govindji Swarup, uh, he made it possible that all the non-technical jobs will be given for the local people. And there, the, all the politicians, the people, local local people, they were very much happy. Govindji Swarup, his social life was very good. Any help required to the children, he was always available. He was a very homely man. He made lots of friends over there. All the uh, businessmen, all the farmers, all the uh, government officials, and all the politicians over there also. So it was, he was a very close associate to our junior people, the local people over there. And as a childhood, when I used to see him, he, a big hair uh, man, 
and he used to come here at my house and uh, uh, he was very down to earth and very homely as if uh, i am a child from his house so whenever i grow old i would like to be like him and admired by all the people so it, it is a huge loss for the nation to our country uh, to all the local people and to my family also i uh, pray god that may his soul rest in peace thank you thank you mr benke for your kind words uh, we now move to shri vishwash kale uh, from uh, khodad village um, is the sarpanch the head of the village so uh, uh, and this will be a video that is already recorded by him in marathi but the english translation is there on the screen त्यांच्या जाण्याने सर्वांची फार मोठी हानी झाली आहे आपल्या दुःखात ग्रामपंचायत खोडत तसे सेवाभावी संस्था व समस्त ग्रामस्थ खोड सहभागी आहेत डॉक्टर स्वरूप यांच्या आत्म्या चिरशांती मिळो ही ईश्वर चरणे नम्र प्रार्थना ही माझी भावपूर्ण श्रद्धांजली शुक्रिया काळे साहेब नेक्स्ट इज वन ऑफ दर्लियर सरपंच फ्रॉम खोडत विलेज जालिंदर डोंगरे मामा खगोलशास्त्राचा विविध अंगाने अभ्यास करणारे आणि संशोधन करणारे जागतिक कीर्तीचे शास्त्रज्ञ डॉक्टर गोविंद स्वरूप आज आपल्यात नाही दिनांक सात नऊ दोन हजार वीस रोजी त्यांचं वाद्यख्याला दुःखद निधन झालं आणि आपण एका महान शास्त्रज्ञाला या ठिकाणी हरवलेलो आहोत जे मराठी प्रकल्पाचे किंवा आम्ही त्याला मराठीमध्ये महा काय दुर्बीण प्रकल्प म्हणतो अशा या प्रकल्पाचे ते जनक होते आणि आपल्या असामान्य कर्तृत्वामुळं त्यांच्या या महत्वपूर्ण योगदानानं देशाच्या नावरोगिकात भर पडलेली आहे खोडगावामध्ये त्यांनी जाणीवपूर्वक काही काम केलेलं आहे प्रकल्प उभारत असताना या गावासाठी काहीतरी केलं पाहिजे अशी त्यांची मनोमन भूमिका होती तशी भावना होती त्या अनुषंगानं खोडगाव विज्ञान केंद्राच्या स्थापनेच्या माध्यमातून त्यांनी बहुमत असं या ठिकाणी गावासाठी योगदान दिलेलं आहे ज्यामुळे आज खोडत गावामध्ये सर्वसामान्यांची मदत आज त्या ठिकाणी विज्ञानाचं शिक्षण घेत आहेत निश्चितपणे त्यांच्या जाण्यामुळं या ठिकाणी फार मोठी अशी विलक्षण पोकळी निर्माण झाली ही पोकळी कधीच भरून येऊ शकत नाही परंतु दैवगती पुढे इलाज नाही या ठिकाणी आदरणीय डॉक्टर सोप साहेबांच्या जाण्यामुळं निश्चितपणे अपरिमित असं दुःख झालेलं आहे या दुःखामध्ये आम्ही सर्व खोड ग्रामस्थ मी स्वतः माझा परिवार त्याप्रमाणे आमचे सर्व मित्रमंडळी त्याच्यामध्ये समाविष्ट आहे आणि या ठिकाणी आदरणीय डॉक्टर सोप साहेबांना श्रद्धांजली समर्पित करताना आम्ही ईश्वरला अशी प्रार्थना करतो की विज्ञानाचा ध्यास घेतलेला आमचा हा ज्ञानसूर्य हस्तगत झालेला आहे त्यांच्या पवित्र आत्म्याला आपण चिरशांती द्यावी शुक्रिया डोंगे मामा आफ्टर दीज ट्रिब्यूट फ्रॉम दी लोकल पीपल इन जे एम आर टी एन जुना रिजन वी नाउ मूव टू प्रोफेसर अशुतोष शर्मा हू इज करेंटली सेक्रेटरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया Professor Gobind Sarup was not only an extraordinary scientist but indeed a national icon. It is rare for a scientist to command such widespread public appeal. This is because he was not only brilliant a uh, scientist but one among the prominent nation builders. His efforts put India on the global research map in radio astronomy. He showed by way of real examples that it's not the resources that constrain the limits of scientific ambitions. but the limits of our imagination and creative abilities he was a crusader for self reliance in instrumentation and atmanirbhar bharat 
He inspired scientists from across the institutions in the country to work for common scientific goals, including in the Department of Science and Technology institutions, such as uh, Raman Research Institute, uh, Inst uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics and ARIES, RRI made important contributions to GMRT, and he guided IIA uh, in building a 90-inch optical telescope uh, right here indigenously. Uh, more recently, ARIES benefited tremendously uh, from his guidance as the chairman of the governing council. With his passing away, India really lost an outstanding uh, a person, uh, a scientist, the paradigms for practice of scientific research that he championed and followed will continue to guide us in the times to come. All of us uh, pray uh, for the peaceful uh, journey uh, of his soul. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Uh, and now we move on to uh, Ramesh Bhatt from Australia, who was earlier uh, started his career as a student in NCRA. Govind Suryup has been nothing short of a phenomenon in radio astronomy. It's my privilege to have had him as one of my mentors in the early days of my career. In fact, Govind was still the director at NCRA when I started as a student. Naturally, in my formative years, he had a great influence on me. A characteristic of Govind was that he used to take personal interest in everyone's research, including a beginner like me back then. That is something always motivated us to work harder. I take great pride in saying that my PhD research made extensive use of the UT radio telescope that he built. In fact, several hundreds of hours of pulsar observations from that telescope have gone into my PhD thesis and all the publications that came out of it. Interestingly, many years later, my career path has brought me back to low frequency radio astronomy, taking me back to the roots and prompting me to recollect those good old days and all the wisdom Govind imparted. Here at Curtin, radio astronomy is indeed a major focus area, particularly with the SKLO coming to Western Australia. And in preparation for that, we have been doing a lot of pulsar work at low frequencies and we get to use the GMRT, another great telescope that Govind built as his contribution to global astronomy. Govind has left a deep void in astronomy, but he has also left a great legacy for us to take forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ramesh. Uh, next, we have uh, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, ex-chairman of Indian Space Research Organization and a very close friend of the astronomy community, uh, but I don't see him online. Uh, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, uh, uh, are you, uh, if you're there, can you please unmute and speak? Otherwise, we shall play the video file that you have provided. Professor Gobind Soro was a visionary who applied his beautiful and creative mind to peep into the deepest and the earliest part of the cosmos through an extraordinary feat of engineering and technology. The spirit of nationalism, coupled with courage of conviction and self-confidence that India can do it, made him venture into two world-class telescopes, successively, one in Oti and the other in Pune, which today have been instrumental in producing some of the most fundamental and front-ranking astrophysical outcomes, contributing to the everlasting repository of human knowledge. Simple in idea, complex in execution, many who participated in this were of ordinary skills, but with extraordinary commitment and abilities. These telescopes have stood the test of time as some of the foremost observatories in the world. My own personal contacts with Professor Kovic Soru were several at the different points of my career as a student, as a professional in space program, as chairman of ISRO, and more recently as my sounding board and mentor while seeking advice on planning commission and several other responsibilities beyond. On each of these occasions, 
I saw him in different outdoors, which he donned with ease, appropriate to the situations at hand. He strove like a colossus in the scientific performance of this country and the world for several decades. The wonderful experience of knowing him and learning from him will always be etched in my mind as something special in my life. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Kasturi Rangan, though he is not live. It would have been much nicer to have him live. Uh, next, uh, we move to Dr. Anil Kakodkar, former chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission uh, uh, and the Department and Secretary of Department of Atomic Energy, which is the ministry that funds uh, the National Center for Radio Astrophysics. I first met Professor Govind Swaru sometime in mid 80s when he made a presentation to a largest group on the objectives, the concept and the details of the GMRT project. What impressed and inspired a mechanical engineer like me was the fact that Professor Govind Swaroop was not only a very eminent scientist recognized and very competent astronomer, astro scientist, but also was a very competent engineer and a competent project manager. Later on, I came across Professor Govind Swaroop a number of times in different contexts. And what has made a deep impact on me is his holistic approach to deal with scientific research, instrument and equipment building with a high degree of self-reliance, value addition within the country, and an overall approach to doing science in the country, which actually emulated the principles and ideals set forth before all of us by Dr. Bhava. And I always felt that Professor Govind Swaroop was the next Dr. Bhava for at least a person like me. I use this occasion to pay my respects to his memory and wish that we continue his legacy for times to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kakodkar. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Professor Mashelkar. Uh, former Director General of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research of India. Yes, thank you. Uh, I met Govind for the first time after joining National Chemical Laboratory in Pune uh, almost four decades ago. The lovely, lovely smile on his face in the very first meeting that I saw was exactly the same lovely, lovely smile that I saw many times during his 90th birthday celebrations. I think that Govind, not just as a legendary scientist, but also for simultaneously belonging to my tribe, namely engineering science and frugal innovation. JMRT, with its ingenious, smart structural engineering, with its lowest cost, but high sensitivity and high accuracy, was an exemplar of frugal innovation with affordable excellence, which is something that India leads the world in. Govind had three drivers in his life, perseverance and passion. But in addition, he had something extra, persuasion. I was a personal witness to all these four attributes when I saw him conceptualize and champion the building of what were then to become Indian institutions of science, education, and research. When I was a science advisory council to the prime minister member, and I just saw this in abundance. This showed that Govind was not just a telescope man of India, as he is popularly known among common men, but he also had a grand telescopic vision of Indian science. He could see further than all of us. Today, we talk about Atman Nirbhar Bharat, self-reliant India. Goin was an epitome of Atma Nirbhar Bharat with Atma Vishwas, self-confidence, self-reliant India with self-confidence. The leadership we provided in making India self-reliant, for example, in antenna, 
by snatching away the turnkey project uh, with, uh, from a, a foreign vendor with great self-confidence should serve as a timeless inspirator for us today. To me, Govin was not just an individual, but a great institution himself. Besides being a great institution builder, individuals go, but institutions remain forever. So Govin will live forever, Govin the institution. I end by paying my humble tributes to this great legend and convey our deepest heartful condolences to his beloved family, Bina, Anju, and Vipin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mashelkar. Uh, next, we have uh, uh, Professor Richard Shilitsi, former director of the SKA project. Govan Swaroop really was an inspiration to us all with his big picture vision of radio astronomy and its future directions, his enthusiasm for new ideas, his experience in designing and building large radio telescopes, and his genuine friendliness. And he accomplished a great deal in his long life, and we're hearing a lot about that now. He and, I, he and I first interacted in the late 1970s when he was on sabbatical in Groningen in the Netherlands, and I was a postdoc in Dwingelo. And our last interaction was just a few weeks ago about SKA history. The SKA owes much to Govind, and I'll say a few words about that now. Not, not long after UTI uh, was completed in the early 1970s, Govind began thinking about the next big project, the giant equatorial radio telescope, or GERT, an international telescope with 10 times the collecting area of UTI. But when it became clear at the end of 1983 that GERT wasn't going to be funded, Govan then radically changed the concept into be what became the GMRT. And he told me that he came up with the idea while seeing in the 1983-84 New Year with a glass of whiskey. And somewhere I, there's a picture of showing a, a reenactment of that moment uh, that he made for me last year. One aspect of the GERT science case that came up again independently for the SKA was the possibility of detecting neutral hydrogen in emission in the distant universe. Uh, at a key moment in SKA history in 1990, Peter Wilkinson from Jodrell Bank gave a conference talk about a one square kilometer array concept to follow the VLA and the GMRT with, the ex with extragalactic hydrogen as the main science goal. That was an idea that he derived that independently, as had Robert Brown at Astron. Govan made the only comment on that talk, not as you might expect to point out that he'd already, already proposed that science case in the past, but on additional points to strengthen the case. And that was typical of Govan. He was always looking to the future. And as Ron, as Ron Ekers has already mentioned, Govan and, and Ron proposed a, a global working group uh, under Ursi in 1993 to actually take up the challenge of realizing a big telescope uh, such as uh, been proposed. And this is now recognized as a formal start of the SKA, the project in which India continues to play a leading role. As I said at the beginning, the SKA owes much to Govind. And for me personally, it was a great privilege, privilege to have known and worked with him. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shilitsi. Next, we have uh, Sandeep Trivedi, Professor Sandeep Trivedi, uh, outgoing director of uh, TIFR. Thank you, Yashwan. Should I start? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, please uh, forgive me. I'll depart a bit from my written comments. Uh, Professor Swaroop's contributions for the growth of science especially in India and at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, were truly monumental. Professor Govind Swaroop ka vigyan ke shetra mein yogdan bohat hi mehatvapoon raha hai, khas kar Bharat ke liye aur hamari sansla Tata Mulbhut Anusandhan Kendra ke liye. Um, he told me in our first uh, conversation that he grew up steeped in the ideals of the freedom movement. And he felt he had to respond to Dr. Baba's call to return to India and start radio astronomy here. The group he created, the instruments he built with his remarkable ingenuity and the very high quality of science he did, I feel actually 
exemplify in the best possible way the ideals of our young nation that with a mind without fear, rid, rid of the cobwebs of colonialism, we were as good as anybody. We could do as good science and moreover extend a hand of friendship and cooperation to the international community. And what is more, Professor Swaroop showed that all this could be done on a shoestring budget. What more can you ask of a life in science? He remained enthusiastic till the very end. I met him in his 90th birthday celebrations. Even though the who's who of Indian science was there, he took me aside and we had an animated discussion on quantum computing, which he concluded by saying, Sandeep, I'm going to come to TIFR in Mumbai before my 91st birthday and I want to see your quantum computer working by then. Such was his spirit. Aaj mein unki yad, yaddaash ko shraddhanjali deta hoon aur aasha karta hoon ki sab vajyanik hamare desh ke khas karke hamari TIFR mein unki jeevan se prerna lete jayen. I give my tributes to him today and I hope that all scientists across the country, especially at the Tata Institute will continue to draw inspiration from his life forever. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep, for those inspiring words. Uh, next, uh, we have um, Professor Ramakrishnan, who's actually just taken over from Sandeep Trivedi as the incoming director of TIFR. Thank you, Yeshwant. You know, Professor Govil not only inspired the astronomy group all over uh, India as well as in the world, he also inspired people who are working in other branches of physics, especially experimentalists who even work on tabletop experiment like, you know, condensed matter like me. So as a graduate student of TAFR, I admired Professor Govind Soru for a lot of his vision, not only the vision and also his ability to fulfill that vision. That was in a graduate school when I saw, whenever he gives a talk, I made a point to attend it because I considered him as the best experimentalist which I ever found. Later as an independent researcher, I found that none can match his successful effort to do cutting edge science by building a world-class facility like the GMRT with a shoestring budget. You know, he showed us that you can do world-class science with this very, very minimal budget. By being an unassuming trailblazer, he inspired all researchers working in natural science, irrespective of whether it's astronomy or in biology, as, as my colleague said, even in quantum computing and so on. People were not afraid to take up, you know, however big is the experimental setup, they, they have a role model in Professor Govind Soru. So I feel that India has lost a true icon who made extraordinary contribution, not only to science, as well as education, which uh, Dr. Mashalkar referred to. May his role, may his soul rest in peace. And the true tribute to him is for the my colleagues at NCRA, who will take this uh, NCRA to even greater heights. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ramakrishnan. Um, next, we have uh, Mr. Islur, who was one of the earliest uh, colleagues of Govind Swaroop at the UT Radio Telescope. Uh, but I am not sure if he's able to unmute. So, Mr. Islur, if you're able to hear me, could you yeah, please yeah, ask? I... Oh, okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, then uh, you can start, Mr. Islur. Is... Okay, so it looks like it's Hello? Still... Yes. Yeah, yeah, play, play them. Okay. Um, okay, maybe uh, Mr. Islud looks like having difficulty with his connections. Can you hear us, Mr. Islud? Yeah, I can hear. Yes, I can hear. But I would like you can play the video. Okay. You would like to me to read? Yeah, if you could do that, that, that would be nice. Yeah. Since you're oh, online. oh, yes, fine, fine. I will do that. Vajradapi kathorani, mriduni kusumadapi, lokotaranam chetamsi, 
कोई भी दुनिया तुम्हें रसी हार्डर देन ए डायमंड सॉफ्टर देन ए फ्लावर हु कैन फैदम द माइंड ऑफ ग्रेट पर्सन मी एंड विजय वर फर्स्ट टू ज्वाइन हिम इन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी थ्री Having finished the Atomic Energy Training School course, we were to select our future. My choice was GFR. What impressed me immensely when I met Govind was his simplicity, zeal, and enthusiasm. And of course, he wanted to do something for the country and science in the, our country. He talked about starting a new group in radio astronomy. mind you it is going to be hard work physically and mentally he said after giving a brief introduction to the subject and his plans we have to start from very scratch are you ready he said after a pause i told it, i i told him yes i am oh take some time islur think over go to the library and go through some books on radio astronomy and related subjects meet me tomorrow looking back i feel very happy and proud having joined my hands with him i had the privilege of working with all the three telescope projects call me govin and not dr swarup once he told me this was when we were going by jeep in search of a suitable site for kalyan radio telescope it was back in 1963 i was a bit puzzled being a student at his simplicity and warmth and till the end of his life he was very warm he was too friendly he never showed himself with his uh, uh, i mean his uh, uh, seniority to all all of us go in this g for genius o for outspoken v for visionary i for intellectual n is nationalist nationalist to the core and d for dine of radio astronomy in india yeah thank you mr hey, yeah yeah i pay my respect to him and to his family thank you sir thank you so much mr islur and uh, next we have uh, shri suresh damle uh, for whom we will play a pre recorded video dr govin swarup for the first time in august 1964 i immediately noticed his pleasant smile and very twinkle in his eyes he explained to me the planned structure of the series sphere so there is and asked me to discuss further with the boy who had already initiated some work in this direction Over a period of time, I took over this task from Kapai. Several other colleagues also joined Dr. Sarup to work on the other parts of the Uti telescope. All of us soon realized that behind that pleasant smile, there was a hard taskmaster driving us all to work as a cohesive team dedicated to a common good goal. We saw in him a perfect group leader, in fact, a father figure for all of us. and he was certainly the father of radio astronomy in india after the uti telescope was commissioned i returned to mumbai and with dr swarup support and guidance started working on sponsored projects with dr sita ram for the monix program of imd throughout all this subsequent work dr swarup always remained my guiding spirit even a decade later when i started working in sameer on building the msc radar project at tirupati it was dr swarup support and guidance which proved crucial in this sense he remained a father figure all through my career thank you mr damle continuing with the trend of the oldest colleagues of govind swarup we now move to uh, ds bagri hello everybody I joined Govind's group at Tata Institute in 1964 and was part of his group till 1985. Most of us were just out from college when we joined his group. He was always very caring, affectionate, inspirational. He was a great mentor. 
Cohen literally treated us as his own kids and allowed us freedom to grow in every possible way. He taught us not only engineering and science, but also how to face adversities in life. One example that comes to mind is when Uti telescope met with accident as it was just getting completed. He did not waste time mourning about the accident and immediately faced the challenge to make it work again. He was very focused and able to switch with great ease from one topic to another almost instantaneously without losing focus. I was stationed in OT and Goin also spent a lot of time there during construction of the telescope and its, its initial operations. During this period, we used to spend a lot of time together during the evenings and weekends. We used to go out for long walks and talk all sorts of things, engineering, science, family, life, and whatnot. I learned a lot from him during this period. Those we love don't go away. They walk with us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and still so dear. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Bagdi. And we now move to another old time uh, colleague, uh, Professor Anand Krishnan, who's also been with us in NCRA for many, many years. So, Anand, uh, if you can hear me, would you uh, uh, like to speak live or we play a video? I can speak. Can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. So then I will yeah. be. Okay. But we don't have yes. your. Yes, yeah, go ahead. I, I... I joined the team of uh, uh, Gold Saru. My mentor and guide. Sorry, Sir Anand. Oh, somebody ran this. No, okay. that's fine. You, you can uh, still speak. Okay. I, I speak. Yeah. Yes. So I joined Gold in TFR in September 1966. Thus began a long association uh, with Govin and everyone else in the team. Uh, some of them have just spoken just now. The excellent teamwork under his guidance paved the way for solving many hurdles and achieving extraordinary dreams like building the uh, OT radio telescope and GMRT later. He saw uh, from the first light from the OT telescope on the night of February 18, 1970, Gold had boundless energy and embarked on the OT synthesis radio telescope and then again on giant equatorial radio telescope about which Richard talked. And finally on the GMRT, which as Richard said, was uh, the idea came to him after a night of revelry and a glass of whiskey. He put us all to hard work when he was a taskmaster to excel in instrumentation as well as in science. He motivated everyone on what he wanted to achieve in the time available. He was persistent and he created a very large school and facilities that are likely to remain strong for a very, very long time. After his formal retirement, I had the privilege of uh, taking up GMRT and commissioning it. And then he tried to set up an Indian Institute for Science and Technology Education with Professor Viji Bide. They almost succeeded but then the government changed and then it became the ICERS of today. Govin truly became a legend in his lifetime and he was truly versatile, but remained as a simple person throughout his life until the very last day. May his soul rest in peace. And my heart felt condolences to Bina, Anju and Vipin and their extended family. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Um, we next move to another old time colleague, Professor Gopal Krishna. And uh, Gopal, I understand we are playing your video. Uh, uh, yeah, I joined this group at TIFR in 1967 as a 19 year old research associate. And so I not only had the privilege of his academic mentorship, but also his inside view of his visionary leadership for over, uh, over five decades. In 1963, Soro opted to move from USA to India. His decision was truly remarkable for two reasons. Firstly, 
In 1960s, India was experiencing a wave of brain drain to US, but Swarup chose to swim against the tide. And in doing so, he proved the maxim that kite flies the highest against the wind. Secondly, 1960s was also the golden age of radio astronomy, uh, which saw groundbreaking discoveries like quasars, cosmic microwave background, pulsars. Thus, being in the USA in 1960s really meant being in the right place at the right time. Yet, Swarup took the bold step of returning to India and started radio astronomy here from scratch. Basically, his mantra was to eschew fashionable science and promote that science which exploits India's natural advantages. For instance, his antenna design for the Utu telescope exploited the natural hill slope at Utu. Likewise, he developed the smart design concept for GMRT antennas to exploit the fact that this region doesn't get snow. Today, dozens of engineers and scientists nurtured in Swarup's ecosystem are making important contributions across the globe. And many of them were trained at UT Telescope and at the UT Synthesis Radio Telescope, which was really the seat of GMRT. And GMRT paved the way for the square kilometer array, the telescope of the future. The iconic uh, voyage of Professor Govind Swarup makes him a Navratna of science in independent India. In my humble opinion, it would be fitting tribute to his memory that GMRT Observatory at Kota is named after him. Thank you, Gopal. Uh, we next move uh, to Professor Bernie Fanaroff, uh, from, uh, a colleague from South Africa. Thank you. Uh, Gavin will be sorely missed around the world. He was an inspiration for us, I think for everyone, for his contribution to world astronomy, which people have described, for the huge role he played in building radio astronomy in India, and for the friendship and the help he gave to us in building radio astronomy in South Africa. He, he was very warm, he was very helpful. He, he never stinted in, in giving of himself. Govin played an important role in advising us on the development of astronomy and of the Meerkat telescope and the SKA in South Africa. He was a warm and a very generous friend. He played an important role in the SKA as we've heard as a global project and his continuing interest in the SK was both valuable and inspirational and we will miss him. He was a great friend and our condolences to his family and his colleagues at NCRA. Thank you, Bernie. Um, uh, and we now move uh, to Dr. Srikumar Banerjee, uh, former chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Uh, Dr. Banerjee, uh, if you're there, I'm, I'm starting your presentation. Um, is he, uh, have we lost him? Is this maybe lose, uh, his connection is not stable? Is it unmuted now? Yes, yes, it's unmuted. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, um, with uh, the demise of Professor Gavin Saroop, uh, we have really lost an iconic figure of our atomic energy family. I, I had the opportunity of visiting UTI before I met Professor Gavin Saroop personally. I was awestruck by the sight of this half a kilometer long and 30 meter wide radio telescope aligned along the local latitude, taking advantage of the slope of the terrain. The precise maneuvering of such a mammoth structure of parabolic cylindrical reflector and detecting feeble signals are no doubt engineering marvels. The team, by, team led by Professor Sarup conceived, designed, and built such a facility entirely with indigenous resources way back in uh, mid 1960s. I was told that the high sensitivity of the telescope makes it capable of detecting signals from a mere one-way radio station located 10 million kilometers away. The telescope has served half a century and continues to be one of the most sensitive radio telescopes in the world. The high sensitivity and the collecting area of the UT radio telescope has been exploited for studies of astrophysical phenomena such as pulsars, solar wind, and photogalaxies. 
the exemplary ingenuity and courage shown by Professor Swaroop to take up such a project when the country's industrial infrastructure was at its infancy will leave an indelible mark in the Indian scientific history. I recall several occasions of meeting him and was always impressed by his sincere and unassuming persona and his contagious enthusiasm. I met him just about a year back and even at that age, I was so impressed seeing his enthusiasm that uh, uh, we always feel that he will remain an inspiring personality to the scientists of, for the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee. Uh, we now uh, have uh, Professor Mustansid Verma, former director of TIFR. Thank you. Um, Among scientists in India, Professor Govind Swaroop stands out both in terms of vision and accomplishment. He was ever passionate about both science and education. I remember meeting him at TFR soon after I took over as director in 2000. In his inimitable style, he strongly stressed to me the importance of educating and training young scientists, especially at the undergraduate level, within the milieu of a large research institute. Today, although we do not have a full-fledged undergraduate program at the institute, which perhaps Govind would have liked, nevertheless, TIFR and its centers do engage with undergrads in diverse, creative ways. It was indeed the good fortune of TIFR to have him seed and then lead the radio astronomy program at the institute. As we know, this effort has paid rich scientific dividends over the years. I believe one of Govind Swaroop's most significant, most significant accomplishments was to gather a truly fine set of people at NCRA around the GMRP. I believe it is this single point which will ensure that his legacy will endure long, long beyond the decades to come. Thank you. Thank you, um, Professor Barma. Uh, we now move uh, to Professor Jant Narlikar, the founding director of a neighboring institute, Ayuka. <clears throat> the passing away of Govind Swaroop removed from the scene the oldest active astronomer in India. Although oldest indicates age, so far as Govind was concerned, he was the youngest nonagenarian astronomer in India. Having observed him at work for nearly five decades, I feel that he was ageless. There are several ways to look at this statement. First, whenever you met him, you would have some idea to air. The idea may be to do with some new kind of radio telescope or some new kind of institution to attract young students. The trouble was, that his imagination was fast changing. And if you met him even after a week, he would have changed the ideas he had talked about a week before. Secondly, he was one of those rarities in India who were at home with instrumentation. <coughs> his ideas fructified in Kalyan Uti, Khodad, etc. And also in Brazil, where Hanuman Savan, learning from Govin, set up a telescope. Thirdly, he had developed contact with radio astronomers worldwide. And it was through them that he had kept Indian astronomy 
in active interaction with the international community of radio astronomers. My interaction with Govind was closer when we were both in Pune. He was setting up GMRT and its controlling institute, NCRA, and I was setting up Ayuka. Having Govind on our various committees was a mixed experience. But on the whole, I would definitely rate it as positive. Certainly, we are grateful to him for, for providing some office rooms in the early days when Ayuka's building had not come up. This also included the shelter for Ayuka's growing library. He will be greatly missed. Uh, thank you, Professor Narlikar, for your kind words. Uh, next on the program, we had Mr. Hari Pulakkad. But uh, Hari, if you're there, uh, we have your file missing. So we will come back to you a bit later on, if you don't mind. Uh, and we'll just move on to the next uh, uh, speaker, which is Professor Rajaram Nityananda, uh, also a former director of NCRA. And uh, here I have an audio file to play. passing brings back many memories. I'd like to share some of my own from the early 1970s to the early 1980s, a period which younger uh, members may not know that well. For me and others doing astronomy at the Rama Research Institute, this was a period of initiation with strong radio flavor. Astronomy Center at Puti and Govind were very much part of our lives. He had a major role in many academic programs in Bangalore and Uti, and I benefited from all of them. But I would like to focus on the unique relationship which developed between the group at RRI and that at Uti. We felt welcome, not just as guests, but almost like close relatives. Govind's own broad vision and his strong working relationship with Radhakrishnan made this possible. We had NVG Sharma coming from Uti, bringing his experience and Uti culture and setting up the RRI electronics lab, which he did very well, which was later even to contribute to the first generation receivers for the GMRT. My colleague Anant Ramaya was practically a dual citizen of RAC and RRI, observing recombination lines at Uti for years for his thesis and uh, bringing back vivid tales of uh, the Uti group and all the exciting things happening there. For me personally, I learned about deconvolution from C.R. Subramania, who was a pioneer in this field. And long before he actually published his work, it had an influence on work done at RRI. And all this was overlaid by a sense of the grand adventure which Govind had launched and the talented group that he had assembled, trained, and inspired. In those days, I could not even have dreamt that this adventure was just a prelude to a grander much harder, much longer venture, the giant medium radio telescope. And for me personally, later, spending a whole decade in Pune. When the history of experimental science in India is written, the GMRT will stand out as a rare example, which measured up to and even set a global standard. It was my privilege to know Govind, to be touched by him in my career, and to be interested with a role in sustaining his legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Rajaram. Um, we next move to Professor Chandra Jog from the Indian Institute of Science. Yeah, Professor uh, Govind Sorup's contributions to Indian science and radio astronomy in particular are immense. In fact, it is hard to believe that one person could do all this. And in the process, he has touched so many lives. He was a pioneer, he came big and was driven by excellence in science. He designed telescopes with innovative designs like uh, Uti Radio Telescope and GMRT. And I think equally important, he motivated talented people to join and give their best to these world-class projects and make them you know, a reality. I first met Govind Swarup in 1976 at the first summer school in astronomy held in Bangalore. This was just before I was to leave for a PhD program at Stony Brook in the US. 
the interaction with Govind Swaroop and others, uh, for example, Rajaram Dityananda at the summer school left a very strong impression on me and indeed on most of the participants. Some of the other participants were Srinivas Kulkarni, Saikia and so on. After that, I was sure I wanted to return back and work here. And I was indeed fortunate to join the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore as a faculty in 1987. Uh, Swaroop had played a major role in the establishment of the Joint Astronomy Program or JAP at IISC, probably a first program of its kind in India. And his idea was to create a trained pool of young scientists at a steady rate. At that time, the TIFR radio astronomy group was based on IIC campus and had a really charged atmosphere about it as the GMRT was in the planning stage. And I remember both Govind Swarup and Vijay Kapahi were very supportive to us in those early years of JAP. Uh, over the years, whenever I visited NCRA or Ayuka in Pune, I would try to look up Govind Swarup. He was an inspiring person, full of ideas, and he was equally open to others' ideas and also hearing about their new work. He had a genuine curiosity and enthusiasm for science that was really infectious. He was approachable and warm. I was touched that he attended the last two talks I gave at NCRA in 2015 and his usual showed keen interest in them. And he was already in his mid eighties by then. I feel privileged to have known him all these years. We'll all miss him. He's no longer with us, but his memories and ideas will always inspire us. Uh, thank you, Professor Chanda Jog. Uh, next, we have uh, Professor Chitre, um, uh, for whom we don't have a file. But uh, Professor Chitre, if you're online, uh, you're welcome to start speaking. Yes, indeed, I'm online. I'm not going to stick to my script. Am I audible? So let me just make it an extempo tribute to go in whom I had known uh, oh, for good many years. He was the first person I'd come across when I came on board of TIFR in 1967. He welcomed me, and Bina and Govin really made our family as part of there. And when the UT telescope was coming up, they invited us along with our little boy who was hardly eight months old then, to come to UT. And I could see what an enthusiastic uh, support Govind was giving to his colleagues. His students then were really helping him and giving passionate involvement in building up of UT telescope after the Kalyan Solar Radio Telescope. You couldn't, I mean, that was like a radiation drag, you felt. Govin has always been a very passionate scientist, an electrical engineer by training at Stanford. He did his PhD. And when following the example of the Cavendish Laboratory, he took the advice Dr. Homi Bhava did from uh, Basically, the Cavendish professor. You see, Cavendish Laboratory was well known for great work in uh, nuclear physics, particle physics. But when uh, Lawrence Bragg took over as the Cavendish professor from Rutherford, he said, No, we can't afford to compete with the United States and European nations. So let's now switch. And he then switched to radio astronomy by inviting Martin Reed, Martin Ryle, I mean, to set up the radio astronomy and Max Perus to set up molecular biology. The rest is history. And Dr. Bhabha, on the advice of John Cockcroft, exactly followed that advice. He invited uh, Govind Saru to set up the radio astronomy group and Obed Siddiqui to set up the molecular biology group. All in all, if you look at the history, these inspiring visionaries really set, if you like, the uh, basically the roadmap for the development of Indian science. And Saru really made his phenomenal contribution. See, many of us conceive, if you like, Mega science projects, but very few of us deliver and extract science at the end of it all. Govind 
dreamt of setting up OT and then GMRT. In fact, I was present when Dr. Karkopkar mentioned in the uh, DA headquarters when Dr. Raman had invited us as kind of experts when Govin made the presentation. The only comment Dr. Ramana made was, Govin, don't be a banya. You are projecting the whole project in 30 crores. I will sanction 50 crores for GMRT. And GMRT indeed needed that kind of budget. So you need a good patron. They happened to be a good patron. And Saroop had the freedom and the enthusiastic batch of students some of whom just now spoke earlier, and he delivered in about 15 years' time the GMRT. But you know what? Govind has always been a very restless visionary. After Kalyan, he conceived of Uti. After Uti, he came to GMRT. I'm sure even in eternity, Govind will be a restless creature who will probably be planning a celestial network. So you don't be surprised if one of these days we get a signal from him. But I'll be remiss if I don't mention the contribution his wife and the family, Bina, made. Bina used to be alone in TIFR quarters when Govind would spend months at Uti and later on at GMAT. So with that, I would like to give my extempore tribute to Govind's memory, whom I will sorely miss as both my teacher and my mentor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Chitre. Uh, we now move next to uh, Professor Savan, a colleague uh, who's, uh, who did a lot of work in Brazil. Hello, it's Savan from Brazil. I know Govind more than around 40, 41 years. I used to visit the Uti. In one of the trip told me they will be developing GMRT near Pune. I was happy. I was in CRA, he will take me to the GMRT site. Two hours, he will talk and talk and talk and explain me how difficult GMRT is developed. Still, his talk had a green memory in my brain. We were developing to Asymmetric interferometer in Brazil. I was discussing with him. Finally, I invited him to visit Brazil for three weeks in 1997. He came to Brazil, worked very really hard, saw each site which he decided to develop. Finally, he decided one site in Valley and asked me if this valley going to be the name when building it in the world. While going, he gave me a 30 pages written by pencil in hand. Anubal, this is our project, solar and non-solar. Read it and develop it, we are in. Moment people know, Karup is in, all national and international committees have participated, institutes participated in the field development project. We are in the final phase of the video, second phase. As in when it will complete, we name the valley as a Korean value. And this simple toy, Kesimati Institute in Brazil, will be in perpetual memory to scientific people and his wish will be satisfied to do sciences in the southern sky by Savan. Thank you, uh, Professor Savan. We continue with the uh, Brazilian thread with the next speaker being Reynaldo Rosa. Hello, I'm Reynaldo Rosa from National Institute for Space Research, Inc. Brazil, and uh, at this moment, I wrote some words that I would like to share with all of you in honor of Professor Richard. Kovi Swarupi was one of the great scientists and one of the most complete person of intelligence and spirit who influenced my career. I had the opportunity to be with him here in Brazil and also during my visit to India. I remember every detail of those moments and all their professional and human aspects. And everyone 
was always extremely positive and delightful. I was honored and enlightened to suggest and design in 2019 the Govin Swarup's Medal, an international award that in its first edition was awarded to two brilliant researchers, Hanuman Shankar Sawant and Pierre Ricard. I am sure that this award for radio astronomy will be for a long time with us to remind him and his incredible, blessed, joyful, and inspiring soul that is with us, certainly for eternity. My condolences to family and friends, and I can say be strong and somehow happy as he has always been and will be wherever he is. I have some photos to show you. this opportunity. Thank you so much for this very touching and musically enhanced tribute. Now, before I hand over the, the role of host to my colleague, Jeram Chengalur, we'll just go back and finish uh, uh, the tribute from Mr. Hari Pullakat. Our backroom has generated the files now. And so, uh, Hari, we are ready to go with your video. I've been a journalist for about 30 years, during which time I have been writing on science and technology for two publications in India. Um, I had never met Govind Sarup during this 30 years, although he was one of India's best astronomers. I met him for the first time in 2016, December, when I started work on my book. I had heard about his work, but I didn't know it in depth. And I was astonished at his uh, work and what he had done. And even more astonished that very few people know, knew about him. Anyway, during the next three years, I met him three times, had about 30 to 40 phone calls and exchanged about 70 to 80 emails. He, I kept asking him for information again and again. And he never said he was busy. Everything I asked, he got me within a few days. And he went out of the way to get things that he did not immediately have. I had never met anybody who remembered so much about his own work, even to the minutest of details. He had preserved all his business cor uh, official correspondence meticulously and made them readily available. He was actually a writer's dream. Um, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pulakkad, for uh, that interesting um, tribute to Professor Govind Saruk, and we look forward to your book coming out in the near future. Uh, with that, now I will hand over the role of host to my colleague, Jaram Chengalur, to take you through the rest of the proceedings. Sorry, I have to stop sharing. Yeah, you've done that, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, I have to ask to unmute you. Yeah, now you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Yashwant. And um, we'll start now with a video from uh, Anand Deshpande, the founder chairman of Persistence Limited. opportunity of meeting Professor Govind Suru several times after I started persistent in the last 25 to 30 years. We first met him when Professor Ramesh Sinha introduced us to him. He was the director at GMRT and I had just started a new business in Pune and I was looking at data and other related areas. 
So we had some very interesting discussions and we actually started working with GMRT in the early 90s around the Apes Plus Plus project. My interactions with Professor Swaroop were always energizing. It was amazing how curious he was, how he would come up with new ideas and would challenge everyone. He loved really working with younger people and it was quite exciting to work with him. His son is my age, we were same class, Vipin and I, we are from the same batch. So he was like a father figure to me and I really miss him. His contributions to astronomy have been amazing. I want to mention another story where I had an opportunity to work with him. He was part of a small group of scientists led by Professor Viji Bhide, who were responsible for setting up ISAR in Pune. I attended as several of their meetings as some outsider who had they would use for bouncing off ideas. And one of their main challenges was, how do we make science attractive to new students? They always felt that everyone wanted to go to the IITs and become an engineer, and we were not getting enough top students to become scientists. I'm so delighted to see the progress made by ICERS in Pune and other parts of the country, that his dream of getting bright students to come to science has been fulfilled. We will miss Professor Swaroop, but I want to express my sincere condolences. We will remember him all our lives. The work that he has done will live forever. I want to express my condolences to Vipin and the rest of the family. And I wish and hope that God will give you all the strength to deal with this great loss. Thank you, uh, Anand. Uh, so we move on now uh, to uh, Professor Sarav Paul, uh, the director of ICER Kolkata. So, Professor Paul, if you're on, please start. Yeah, I, am I visible? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Please start. Okay, so uh, um, let me uh, express my condolence from my personal behalf and on behalf of ICER Kolkata as well as NCL Pune, because I met Professor Govind Saroop when I was at NCL Pune. On behalf of NCL Pune, I said Kolkata, I extend our condolences. Govind Saroop was a giant in Indian science who inspired generations of students, designed fantastic instruments to probe the furthest reaches of the universe and catalyzed many national academic initiatives, including of course, the Indian Institutes of Science, Education and Research, one of which I have the privilege to lead today. He was one of the last of that pioneering generation who built the foundations of science in a newly independent India. In losing Govind, we have lost one of India's finest citizens. Govind was a scientist and instrument developer par excellence building spectacular astronomical observatories, working with Indian talent and Indian soil. He achieved these feats by nurturing a synergy between scientists, engineers, software developers, and students of science, sustaining an interdisciplinary atmosphere which enabled these world-class observatories. It is precisely this kind of interdisciplinary and holistic approach to science that we wish to nurture in the ICERS today. Govind was an early proponent of research institutes that would train undergraduate students, seamlessly combining teaching with an environment of research. He, along with Professor Viji Vide of Pune University, conceptualized such centers based on the interdisciplinary idea of integration of teaching and research and the initiatives by Professor Sienna Rao, ICERs were eventually formed. I'm aware that Govind's loss is felt deeply by the community he had touched, including my colleagues here at the Department of Physical Sciences and the Center of Excellence in Space Sciences India at ISA Kolkata. Govind's life is truly inspirational. Even in his physical absence from this world, I'm sure that the legacy of his science and his achievements would continue to inspire and motivate generations of Indian scientists and students. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, Professor Paul. <laughs> so now we go on to um, uh, Amitesh Omar, who will 
who is from Aries and will speak, I think, on behalf of Aries. Amitesh, please go ahead. Yeah, I will read uh, our message from uh, Aryabhatta Research Institute of Observational Sciences in Nainital. Uh, we in Aries Nainital are deeply saddened by the passing away of Professor our heartfelt condolences to the grieved family members. Many members of Aries have unforgettable memories of his association when he was the chairperson of Aries Governing Council and he guided Aries to the path of success in self reliance. Professor Saroop accepted the charge of chairperson of Aries Governing Council on 15th March 2016 when the installation of the 3.6 meter Devastal Optical Telescope near Nainital was just completed. He wholeheartedly supported the Devastal Optical Telescope in the ST Radar project and the International Liquid Mirror Telescope project of the Institute. Professor Saroop, as he has always been, remained inspiring for the Aries members. He relentlessly inquired about the progress on the backend instruments for the telescope and the images coming from the telescope. He was very supportive of building Aries Devastal Fant Object Spectrograph in camera within India, which is now commissioned on the telescope. Four meetings of the Governing Council were held under his chairmanship between March 2016 and November 2017. Professor Saroop visited Devastal in November 2016, despite an old age, Aries is indebted for his invaluable contribution towards the progress of the Institute. Professor Saroof has left behind an ever-inspiring legacy in the forms of his works, vision, and positive thoughts, which will keep guiding us for many years. Thank you. Thank you, Amitesh. Um, so we'll move on now to Professor G. Professor G.C. Anupama, who is the president of the Astronomical Society of India. Thank you, Jaira. Uh, the Astronomical Society of India is deeply saddened by the device of Professor Govind Swaroop. Uh, Professor Swaroop was one of the early members of the society. In fact, he was the second president of the uh, ASI as soon as it was formed. And along with Professor Venu Bapu and uh, Abhyankar, he guided its destiny during the formative years. He was a regular figure in the ASI meetings, participating enthusiastically in the scientific deliberations, as well as in the matters of the society. Um, having returned to India in 1963 with a PhD from Stanford and a strong motivation, desire and aspiration to develop radio astronomy in the country, the OT radio telescope, the giant meter wave radio telescope, and the NCRA are testimonies of his desire and aspiration. He leaves behind a team of astronomers and engineers groomed to rise above their normal selves and meet challenges. Professor Swaroop's passion for development of cost-effective and innovative technology went beyond radio astronomy. Always effervescent, with an unabated enthusiasm for science and technology, he attracted and inspired a large number of scientists and engineers of all ages. The story of his life and work will continue to inspire future generations of astronomers and engineers. A pioneer and an icon of Indian astronomy, he will be greatly missed. On behalf of the Executive Council and the members of the Astronomical Society of India, I convey my condolences to his family and the National Center for Radio Astrophysics. Thank you, uh, Anupama, for that. Um, we'll move on now to uh, Professor Tiziana Venturi, the director of the Institute of uh, Radio Astronomy, INAF, in Italy. Thank you, Jarayam. I'm here on behalf of the whole radio astronom astronomical community and of the many colleagues and friends in Bologna. The starting of radio astronomy in Italy and India is very similar in scope and project. But back in the late 60s, the conversations and letter exchanges took place between Professor Swaroop in India and our group in Bologna. In the very early 60s, the Bologna group built the Northern Cross Radio Interferometer closer to our institute. 
I was unable to recover the original letters and other material exchange between Govind and our group, but considerable share of information has taken place at the time when in parallel the UTI radio telescope was completed. These two radio telescopes, almost identical, represent the birth of modern radio astronomy in India and in Italy. Thanks to the GMRT, the scientific collaborations between our two countries have expanded considerably. Professor Swarup has always enthusiastically supported such collaborations whose scientific content he knew in detail. Each time I met him when I was visiting Pune, he would come to me and ask about our projects and their progress with bright eyes and genuine enthusiasm. I thought it was just amazing. A lot has happened in radio astronomy in our two countries in, only in 50 years. And now India and Italy are collaborating again on a much broader scale for the design and construction of the SKA. And all this progress has been possible because the fathers of radio astronomy and Professor Swarup has been one of them, have, be, have built and fed incredibly strong and healthy roots. I wish to, to thank the organizers of this event, since we have the chance to share our sorrow for the loss of Govind, but at the same time, we can be grateful to Govind one more time for growing such a large family of radio astronomers who have now the pleasure and the responsibility to ensure that his projects, ideas, and enthusiasm can be continued. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tiziana, for that. Um, we'll now uh, move on to uh, Shankar Dada Torat, who was, uh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. The next will uh, Hari Om Vats who uh, is from the Physical Research Laboratory, and he will talk about site selection for the GMRT. He's a father of radio astronomy in India, a great inspiration for all of us. Sat Sat Naman. I will narrate two uh, incidences, uh, GMRT site selection, and second one, the BDA formative stage. In February 1985, uh, Professor Saru and his team had surveyed three possible sites for GMRT, one near Bangalore, and one near uh, Pune, and one near Indore. And this meeting was called precisely to consider the ionospheric effect. Very senior three uh, scientists of ionospheric physics were invited uh, there. And since I had done um, my PhD on what, using 40, 140, and 360 megahertz radio beacon from ATS-6 satellite recorded at OT, I also was invited to speak in this meeting. And uh, all three senior scientists gave very long talk, one hour each, and I spoke at the end uh, for about 15 minutes. Um, and in my talk, based on my studies of anisphere scintillation and my knowledge of scintillation theory, I categorically stated at the end of the presentation that Bangalore site will be worst from the anisphere scintillation point of view, and uh, the site near Indore and Pune will be all right. And in fact, uh, because Pune uh, is slightly south of uh, equatorial anomaly region, uh, so maybe slightly better even from Indore. And after my presentation, Professor Saruk came to this stage and made a statement that three senior scientists spoke a lot about anisphere physics and uh, anisphere scintillation, but did not make any mention about the, the effects on the sites that we have in mind. But what's very categorically stated, the effect of uh, atmospheric situation at all these three sites and I thank you for that and from that I learned that any meeting that you go to you should talk precisely to the point uh, for which the meeting was called. The Another uh, experience that I had with Professor Suru was in Brazil in 1999 uh, at that time I was on sabbatical leave to work 
प्रोफेसर सावंत फॉर अबाउट टू इयर्स प्रोफेसर सावंत प्रोफेसर स्वरूप विजिटेड देयर फॉर ए वीक एंड डिस्कस ऑल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ डीडीए एंड आई एम आई एम वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट इन सेइंग दैट इट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ प्रोफेसर स्वरूप दैट डीडीए वुड गेट क्रिएटेड एंड इन ब्रिज Professor Saroop will be remembered forever, and may his soul rest in peace. Thank you, uh, Professor Watts. So, with that, uh, we go now to uh, Shankar Dada Thorat, who was um, the Sarpanch at JMRT. Prasiddha Kavol Chaturdhaj, Dr. Govind Saroop, and J. Idrang, 7 November 2020, Ruji, Uttar Pradesh, Dr. Govind Saroop, and me. संशोधन के Shankar Dada. So after that, we uh, uh, move on to Dr. Raut. Dr. Raut is the medical officer uh, at the GMRT. Thank you for that, Dr. Raut. We now will hear from uh, Isaac Shafran, who was one of the young engineers hired uh, by Govind at the time when the GMRT was being designed. We all know Govind was an absolutely remarkable chap. He has made exceptional contributions to the field of medicine, and he has been recognized as an expert in the field of astronomy in India, 
and rightfully earned the title of the father of radio astronomy in India. Today, as we have gathered to celebrate his life, I would like to share with you one of my most vivid memories of working with him. About three decades ago, I had just finished my undergraduate education and started my first job as a research scientist at NCRA. We well, we'll spent a surprisingly generous amount of time with me, talking about everything, ranging from the big picture of the project to the minutiae of engineering solutions, often sharing insights from bracelets or engineering tricks from Putin, always very inspiring. My starter project was designing feeds for a GMRT. As you know, the analysis of feed patterns under deflection due to gravity is not easy to compute and requires finite element analysis. The analysis opened to days to program and to compute. While working on this project, in one of my routine meetings, we were discussing the impact of recent change in design and had readings of printout from the analysis. He took the printout from me, briefly looked over, and scheduled a meeting early next day. Mind you, it was already late night, late in the day. Knowing Golan did not use computers, I was a little puzzled. What was he going to do with the printouts? It was full of numbers. He completely surprised me the next day. He found a few subtle errors. Apparently, overnight, he had cross-checked the simulation all manually with rule of thumb tricks. I was blown away by his intellect. Since then, I have had this image in my mind of Govind working late into night, diligently, meticulously. And as if to fill out this image, we will see the light still on in his house when we return from late night dinners. Years later, I appreciated much more about him. The trust he placed on him of starts like me to solve the challenging technical problems was exceptional. Perhaps that's what kept him up at night. Or he must have been following the motto, trust but verify. Nonetheless, it was life-changing for me and I'm sure for many others. It nurtured his zeal and confidence to take on tough problems. Since those early days, I have worked with many brilliant researchers, both in academia and in industry. And I'm still awed by Govan more than anyone else. He has undoubtedly been a great role model for me and a whole generation of researchers. I feel grateful that I had the opportunity to work with him for five formative years of my research career. Thank you for listening in this celebration of this life. Thank you, Itzhak. So uh, we will hear now from uh, Mr. Maya from the Baba Atomic Re Research Center. Uh, Mr. Maya's group was responsible for the server system at the GMRT. I was uh, privileged to be part of the team from BRC that uh, designed the server systems for GMRT in the late 80s and early 90s. I fondly remember my numerous interactions with him during those exciting days and nights as we surmounted one problem after another with Professor egging us on and leading from the front. Be it an issue related to gearbox or motor, pointing error or locked out of frequency, Professor Soro put surprises with his insights. Not the one to satisfied, not the one to be satisfied easily, not the one to take a no for an answer. He relentlessly pushed us towards optimum solutions. I recall our heated arguments over the cause of current ripples in Azimuth Drive. We apportioned the blame, we the server engineers apportioned the blame on the construction of the Bulgar itself, but the professor wasn't convinced. He suspected the servo system. So we had to drive the motors directly from a battery and demonstrate to him that it in fact had nothing to do with the servo system. In January 93, in the immediate aftermath of the Mumbai riots, I happened to travel with him from the NCRA Pune campus to GMRT site. Professor was deeply disturbed. He spoke at length throughout the two hours journey and said he would be writing to Prime Minister expressing his anguish. Now, on another occasion, I happened to meet him at site immediately after the visit of Professor Chandrasekhar to the site. You know what he told me after visiting the site? He asked me with a twinkle in his eye and that disarming smile of his. You must be liking doing this, isn't it? That's all he said. He quoted Chandrasekhar with a childlike glee. Working with Professor Swaroop has been truly an inspiring experience. Rare are men of his caliber, commitment, and humanism. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Maya. And now uh, we are going to move uh, to the US and we will hear from Namir Kasim from the Naval Research Laboratories. Namir, please go ahead. Uh, I beg your pardon, yes. for the wrong flight. Uh, yeah, Namir, please go ahead. I'll get the right file. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I welcome uh, from, the, from the U. Comments welcome from the U.S. Life uh, and uh, I'm presenting my remarks uh, on behalf of of my radio astronomy group at NRL, but and is also especially uh, Tracy Clark and Simona Giangentucci, who uh, all three of us have been greatly influenced by uh, Govin's career. So Govind uh, Swarup's remarkable life and career were interestingly, from my perspective, paralleled by those of my own mentor and inaugural Grote Reber Medal winner, Professor Bill Erickson. Govind and Bill were especially close friends throughout their careers, and there was undoubtedly a great cross-fertilization of imagination between them. I can remember Govind coming and giving a talk about uh, the SMART concept for the GMRT way back when. It was really, really exciting. Uh, their earlier instruments, uh, including Govin's Udi telescope and Bill's Clark Lake TPT, uh, played major roles in my early career, while uh, their later instruments, Bill's low frequency systems on the VLA and Govin's major achievement with the GMRT, uh, dominate the research of my group until today. Uh, Govin was a very good friend, uh, as it uh, turns out, with my mother. Uh, was a, also a professional astronomer who also only recently passed away. And it's interesting, the dates track themselves <laughs> almost within a few months, their births and uh, deaths. Uh, he was a loyal friend to her at a challenging time in her professional career, uh, as I was always, as I will always remember. Govin treated me almost like a son. And from the remarks I hear of others, this is quite common. And I will remember him as I as I do Bill as I do Bill Erickson like professional fathers across my career. My deepest condolences to Govin's family, and my thoughts go out to the many friends and professional colleagues over whom he was so influential. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Namir, for that um, moving tribute. We will now hear from Prajwal Shastri. Uh, Rajwal, if you're on, please go ahead. My condolences to Veena, Anju, and Vipin. Of course, Govind was a pioneer, innovator, and leader. But when I first met him as a fresh PhD student, Govind stood out as just so different from the rest. His smiling face was more than just reassuring, and the sharp twinkle in his eye was more than just playful. Uh, at my first meeting, he cut right to the science that excited him at that moment, which then was searching evidence for proto-galaxies and measuring the deuterium line by building GERT, or the giant equatorial radio telescope in Indonesia. He, of course, personified infectious enthusiasm with his two word sentences. But looking back, uh, the best thing was that he never inspired awe. Instead, right from the very first moment, with just a few words, he would really provoke. And one could not help but argue back and criticize what he was saying. He thus effortlessly taught the scientific method, and I never found out if that was some deeply thought out pedagogy on his part. Um, I don't really think of him as one of my teachers as such, because he did not do much classroom teaching. But given that criticism is the backbone of the scientific method, he taught us the essence of what science was by just being that himself. A cherished, sharply etched memory is how proud he was, not just of his achievements, but also of his multiple influences beyond just scientists, right from his vibrant Allahabad days and uh, being inspired deeply by Gandhi, enough to drop his last name. Another cherished, fun memory is that he kept showing me how from my Wikipedia page, I could trace my lineage via him 
back to Isaac Newton. Farewell, boys. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Prajwal. We'll now hear from Dwarkanath from the Raman Research Institute. This is Dwarka from the Raman Research Institute. The passing away of Professor Govind Suru brought many memories to me. However, keeping the time limit in mind, I mentioned just a couple of my thoughts. As a young student of radio astronomy at RRI during the early 80s, I came to know of the motivation and history behind the construction of ORT and all the good work being carried out by the UTI group under the inspiration <coughs> of COVID. Both the ORT and the UTI group were an inspiration to all of us. While I thought ORT was already big enough, little did I realize that this was only a precursor for bigger things to come. COVID was talking about GMRT with 30 dishes spread over 25 kilometers. I thought to myself, this is really a crazy thing to attempt in India. During the mid-90s, GMRT was becoming a reality. I remember a meeting at RRI when we tried to convince Govind that we must have 21 centimeter line feeds on GMRT. In his characteristic style, Govind said, if you want 21 centimeter line feeds, you build it. And RRI did. Starting with the mid-90s, I made innumerable visits to NCRA. No visit was complete without meeting Govind, quite often in the corridor or in the canteen, who would be concerned about some problem or the other related to the telescopes, to RFI, to power lines, etc. He would be posing these problems to answers, coding them to solve them, and keeping track of them for weeks and months to come, even when he was pushing 80. Even today, when I'm the GMRT site, I can't suppress a sense of disbelief in me that 30,000 square meters of miracle is working in our backyard. A miracle made possible by Govind's inspirational leadership and his group's dedication. I feel privileged to have worked in radio astronomy at a time when a legend like Govind was around. There is no doubt in my mind that Govind will continue to inspire generations of astronomers to come. Thank you. Dwarkanath. Uh, we now uh, move on uh, to hear from Professor Naresh Dadich, uh, the former director of Ayuka. Uh, Naresh, please go ahead. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Jairam. Like Sandeep, I will also take a liberty of uh, departing from the text. That is because much in the text has already been said. <clears throat> So it was in 1974, there was a, a workshop organized by Jayant Narlikar and uh, Kumar Chitra in TIFR, where there was a very heated and passionate debate, Big Bang versus Study State. Govind and Kapai armed with the uh, regular size observations from the UT radio telescope were pitted against Jeff Barbage and Narlikar. That is when I first met Govind. My uh, stronger interaction started with him when he was <clears throat> scouting for a suitable site for GMRT in mid 1980s. And I was in Pune University. So I did a bit of a midwifery job for GMRT in arranging accommodation and <clears throat> uh, vehicles for the field visits of Govind and his team. GMRT by all reckoning is the greatest instrument of modern science in, in the country, <clears throat> which has advanced the frontiers, fr no, <clears throat> fr fr frontiers of science, but also of technology. Technology that was used to accuracy of one foot 
has to cope with the challenge of a millimeter. For another thing I will be always indebted to Govind is the GMRQ was also a trigger for creation of another institute, Ayuka. And the challenge of bringing that into <coughs> existence was taken by Jayant Narlikar. <coughs> I had a good fortune of working with him right from the conception of the project. <coughs> Govind was a true torch bearer of the glorious legacy of J.C. Bose and C.V. Raman has taken that legacy to greater height, but has also given it a new dimension. He had the uncanny knack of not letting a curious child in him ever leave him. And for that, I will always envy him. <clears throat> he has left behind so much of value and grandeur that it would be very, it would be impossible to forget him. And hence we are never going to remember him. Lastly, let me I'll have share an anecdote. The president of India, Mr. Jail Singh, went for a visit to T radio telescope. And Govind in his correct style was explaining him and taking <clears throat> and switching over to Hindi, the, the Mr. President stopped him in between and said, Tell me, Professor Saab, what is your pay? Well, for first time, one could see the joint, even <clears throat> Govind go, go was speechless. But he again went around, he said, okay, the, but no, the jealousy was quite serious. Next day in the morning, his office again called him. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Naresh. Uh, and so uh, we now uh, will hear from uh, uh, Hugh Brotring, who is the director of uh, Leiden Observatory in the Netherlands. Uh, Hugh, please go ahead. Thank you. I sincerely hope you can uh, hear me. Yes, we can. Ah, that's very good. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah. So, Professor Govind Svarup was clearly a towering figure, has had an amazing life, and has set an example to all, all of us. He had a unique combination of scientific, engineering, and people skills, and for me, he embodied the perfect scientist. And I'll skip some text now uh, that um, uh, people also have said. So let me continue and really say that the entire Dutch community has really benefited from the very open atmosphere of GMRT and all its excellent data. I know many students and postdocs and staff members who are very grateful because that was very important for their development. So thank you. Also, We've had the privilege of welcoming many Indian students and postdocs. And I'm certain that without Swarup's vision, they would have never had worked with us. And that would have been a real shame. And to quote Niruj Mohan, someone many of you know, who was in Leiden uh, working with me for five years. And Niruj said, Professor Swarup wanted the GMRT to be a facility for the entire world and pushed his students to be global astronomers. Indeed, they were. And currently, we have our own Dutch GMRT. It's called LOFAR. And LOFAR is doing very well. And I think that we can really say that its success is directly rooted in Straub's vision. So thanks again for that. So clearly was a great man. And my personal memories of him was someone who was in a very humble way, very joyful, full of life, and genuinely interested in science and the people he met. A remarkable man. So I'd like to conclude that our thoughts in the Netherlands are with his family, our dear colleagues in Pune, and astronomers from the whole in the community. We will miss him sorely. 
Thank you very much, Hu. Um, so our next uh, speaker was uh, Professor Shobha Bhattacharya, who is the um, a former director of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, but I, I don't think he's on the call right now. Uh, Shobha, if you're on, could you please just send a chat message uh, and we'll uh, schedule you uh, as soon as possible. So right now we will move on uh, to Professor Spenta Vodia, who is uh, the founding director of ICTS uh, TIFR. Spenta, please go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> Govind Sarup uh, was a preeminent astronomer engineer who created world-class radio astronomy facilities in India. The great success of the Uti telescope and the GMRT in Pune and the scientists and engineers he nurtured stands testimony to his monumental contribution to India and world science. He is one of those who carried forward the vision and legacy of Dr. Homi Baba, who founded the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and whom he very greatly admired. You can see him recall his experience and conversations with Baba in the film on Homi Baba made by TIFR. He was deeply committed to education and its role in the ascension of India to become a great scientific power. Simply put, he said, unless we combine undergraduate education with research and experiments in all disciplines, for example, in social sciences with field surveys, we cannot expect our universities to become world-class. In his passing away, India has lost a great visionary and uh, inspirational scientist engineer and a committed educationist. In 2008, I was in Ayuka, Pune during the first ICTS cosmology program. At that time, we were actively searching for a place to establish the International Center for Theoretical Sciences of TIFR, that is the ICTS. So Govin spoke to me in person and then also by telephone later on and emphasized that Pune and its neighborhood would be the best place to start the new center. He talked about the future growth of the bombay Pune economic corridor and the presence of good institutions in Pune. We did look very seriously for land in Pune as it was close to Mumbai, but all our efforts failed. The ICTS finally came up in Bangalore and Govind did visit us in 2015 during the program on extragalactic relativistic jets. He introduced Bernie Fanaroff, who delivered a public lecture in that program. And after the talk, as we were all leave, leaving the lecture hall, uh, he came up to me and in his informal and very direct style said, you had a vision. Like Baba, you had a vision. And uh, that's all he said. And uh, I was uh, very much taken aback and said, thank you. That's all. I will always cherish his words. He will be greatly missed, but clearly his legacy will live on. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Spenta, for those words. Uh, we'll now hear from uh, Professor Ajit Kimbavi, uh, the former director of IQ. Ajit, uh, please go ahead. Yes, please. <clears throat> like everyone else, I am one Professor Govind Swaroop as a great astrophysicist, radio telescope builder, and a towering figure in Indian and world astronomy. But after his passing away, my thoughts about Govind have been focused mainly on my personal interactions with him over the years. When I joined the graduate school in TIFR in the early 1970s, Govind asked me to work with him. But then I was enamored with theoretical astrophysics and wanted to work with Jaren Nalikar, which I did. Once again, some years later, I had the chance to work with Govind when he asked me to shift from TIFR to the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore but to head the JAB program there, which I did not do. If I had accepted either of these offers, 
my phase space trajectory would have been quite different, except that in configuration space, it would have ended in Pune anyway, as it has now done. But I'm sure that working with Goen Soru would have been quite different, uh, would have been quite a different experience from working with Jay Nalika. Their ethos, aspirations, and achievements have been very similar, but the outward manifestations of these great qualities in the two gentlemen could not have been more different. My regular interactions with Govin, in person or on the phone, were limited to his talking and my listening and trying to get in a word or two occasionally. What surprised me very much was that the few words I managed to utter were recorded, processed, and remembered by him without any interruption in his own streams of words and ideas and were brought up in future conversations. In this manner, Govind took me from his early ideas of a great new radio telescope to the GMRT. Perhaps what I naively said on occasion did make a difference to the outcome. An important set of conversations I had with Govind were about the 30 meter telescope, the TMT. Govind was not comfortable with India joining the project. He wanted us to build an optical telescope in India. But uh, that such a telescope would necessarily have been a significantly smaller telescope than the TMT, leaving us at least a factor 10 behind in aperture uh, in, in area for the foreseeable future. After many discussions and arguments, Govind finally agreed to our joining the telescope project, for which we are always grateful. Perhaps he always had that outcome in mind and was simply getting her to sharpen our arguments and focus her attention on the important issues which we were missing in our enthusiasm. I last met Govind at a dinner party just before the pandemic. He had gone frail, but his spirits were undiminished and he did speak to me as in the old times. I'm sure he continues to be the same wherever he is now, though he can speak to us only in our imagination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajit. We'll now hear from uh, Professor Anapurni Subramanian, the director of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Anapurni, please uh, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jerem. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak here. I'm speaking on behalf of the IA family and I hereby convey our condolences. Um, uh, with respect to the Institute, uh, Professor Govind Sarup was a member of the first governing council of the Institute from 1971 to 1978. He played a major role in the formative years of the Institute. He has since then continuously encouraged and supported all the endeavors of the Institute. We lost him in this golden jubilee year of the Institute. In the fourth meeting of the governing council in 1971, uh, Professor Sarup's support to Professor Vainabapu was very crucial to initiate the 19-inch telescope project when the 40-inch telescope was not yet functional and his support resulted in the detailed proposal. Otherwise, this would not have been taken up at all. Uh, so uh, not only that, the 19-inch project later became part of the fifth plan. And Professor Sarup was also instrumental in setting up a research committee and an engineering committee to oversee the project. His rich experience in setting up the UT radio telescope helped the 19-inch telescope project um, in uh, uh, a big way. The 19-inch telescope was later dedicated to the memory of Professor Bapu, which is now known as the Venu Bapu telescope. Professor MGK Menon has put on record his contribution to the management organization of the 19-inch telescope in the uh, minutes of the meeting. Professor Sarup had uh, collaborated with Professor uh, Patsati, who belonged to the Astrophysical Observatory in Kodekanal during 1953 to 1955. So this amounts to his collaboration with this institute quite long back as well. And the Astrophysical Observatory became Indian Institute of Astrophysics in 1971. Uh, Professor Sarup was a great supporter of setting up indigenous astronomical facilities in the country. And uh, as a member of the Kanin Council, again in 1993 to 1997, he supported the Institute to embark on the journey of setting up a telescope in the Himalayan region. In the last decade, once again, as Professor uh, Kimberby just pointed out, he helped the Indian team behind the TMT project to sharpen the proposal. He kept asking very hard questions, which made us think quite a bit and make sure that the DPR addressed a lot of things. And also to make sure that the efforts are directed towards a self-sufficient India. 
in terms of engineering and in particular optics. He has also been a pillar of support for the proposed National Large Optical IR Telescope project that is to be made in the country, uh, set up by the country and for the country. So uh, uh, we, the Institute had a condolence meeting on 8th September where many of the faculty shared their memories of Swaru. And I also have shared some pictures taken during the inauguration of the indigenously built 19th telescope. You can see the childlike curiosity with which he's looking at the controls of the telescope. Thank you, our condolences and our prayers. Thank you very much, Annapurni. Uh, we were next to hear from uh, Professor Janardhan Parthmanabhan from PRL, but I think he's not on the line uh, on the call. So, Jerry, if you're on again, could you please just um, let us know in the chat and we'll uh, schedule you. So, we move on now to um, Professor Rohini Godbole from the Indian Institute of Science. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I had uh, like to begin by thanking the organizers, that is you and Yashwant for giving me a few minutes to express these thoughts, which uh, by now, you know, hold a lot in common to the words said by many in this memoriam and essentially a repetition. But I guess the only thing that is different that I can say is that here I am who is neither an astronomer, not an astrophysics uh, physicist. So in that sense, from scientific point of view, I did not have many interactions with uh, Dr. Govind Swaroop, but I would like to express my deepest appreciation of the contributions that he made to the Indian science and education ecosystem. And now because of the interesting importance of the astroparticle physics, I'm beginning to able to appreciate the academic aspect of the impact, for example, of JMRT beyond, of course, being obviously proud of it, being an important India-based mega project. I have been familiar with quite a few mega projects and the international mega projects community. So I know the high regard in which GMRT and of course, Professor Swaroop are held at the international level. What strikes me is that in the time period when India still very much carried the tag of being a developing country, Professor Swaroop built and raised a world-class facility with the rather meager resources available then. And this was a project which was mega project in the science that it did. This was brought home to me in full force when I happened to be a member of a group which was being told of the plans of extending and strengthening GMRT program further. My own interactions and discussions with him were usually in the context of his passionate interest in the coexistence of science education and research in our institutions. I happened to share it with him because I had been involved with educational institutions almost my entire life in science in India. And in this interaction, I experienced his innate humanity and a kindness to a much younger and inexperienced bumbling member of the science community, namely me. I just realized in these talks that some people were giving that he wrote his first paper when I was more or less just being barely born. Indian science would be forever grateful to him for his immense and essential contributions to guide its progress in radio astronomy. My deepest condolences to his family. Thank you very much, uh, Rohini. Um, we will now hear uh, from uh, Sudhir Fakatkar, who is on the engineering staff uh, at the GMRT. Painter for proper hammering to fix 
names perfectly. During his stay at GMRT, I never missed opportunities of evening walk with him. During walks, he disclosed the treasure of science and technology of all over world for me. It was a remarkable experience for me. I wrote his biography in Marathi language as well as co-authored for a tributary article for Journal of Astronomical History and Heritage. During these interactions, I experienced his heartily attachment to science, insight of technology and far long vision for institutional progress. Dr. Surupsar was an ideal example of Atmanirbhar Bharat by creating landmark in radio astronomy. I also worked with him for establishing Kodak Rural Science Center, a milestone example of a cognizance for a small village by an international scientist. He used to tell us, Working with Dr. Bhumi Surupsar is a cosmic proud for me. Thank you very much, Sudhir. Uh, so we now will hear from Vishal Gajjar, who uh, was a student uh, at NCRA and is now uh, at Caltech. So, Sorry, there are very Berkeley. few individuals like Govind who is capable of inspiring and influencing the lives of so many people across six decades. Words can simply not describe how all of us felt when we faced with this void Govind left after his sad demise. I, Vishal Gajjar, is one among those many countless individuals whose professional life has been heavily influenced by Govind's guidance. Here to pay my respect to this great human being. By building two of the world's world-class radio telescope, Govind planted and nourished the field of radio astronomy for several generations in India in the spirit of being a true Bharat Ratna. Govind was enthusiastic about many questions in the field of astronomy. One of these questions is the question of life in the universe. Govind was an avid proponent of search for extraterrestrial intelligence and yearned for GMRT's participation right from the early days of telescope coming online. I recall numerous conversations we had in the NCR canteen and in his office on this topic while I was pursuing my PhD over there. I'm currently working as a researcher with the Break to Listen project at the University of California, Berkeley, which is one of the largest projects to search for evidence of intelligent life in the universe, for which I give full acknowledgement to Govin. He cultivated and supported me to pursue this career, which has given me so much joy and prosperity for which I am ever indebted. My deepest condolences to Govind's family and close friends. I am sure by seeking answers to nature's most profound questions with the GMRT, we will find a way to remember him forever. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, so I understand that uh, Jerry Padmanabhan is now online and we will hear from him. So uh, Jerry, please go ahead. Jerry? Uh, Jerry, we can't hear you. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah I am Janardhan Padmanabhan from the Physical Research Laboratory. I first visited the UT telescope, radio telescope as an IAC summer student in 1981. Oh, okay, let me just put in my... Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. I first visited the UT telescope 
And it was a truly awe-inspiring and unforgettable experience. I remember standing there, looking upon for the first time at the magnificent telescope, fully five and fully five hundred and thirty meters long and thirty meters wide, stretching down a mountain slope with the sun glinting off its stainless steel reflector wires. Standing there, looking upon for the first time, with the magnificent telescope. Stretch. Yeah, uh, Jerry, I think you have the YouTube stream also playing in your background. It's causing confusion. Yeah, there's something happening here. I'm. Uh, Maybe we could just come back to you in a minute. You may okay, have okay, okay, you okay. Have okay. YouTube uh, at the background. We'll hear now from Nitin Mohan, who. Um, who has very recently completed his PhD. No, I've shut off the YouTube, yeah. Yeah, there's something happening here. I'm getting an echo, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll, uh, we'll hear now from Nitin Mohan. We'll get back to Jerry in a moment. Uh, we'll hear now from Nitin Mohan, who has just completed his PhD. First of all, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Nitin Mohan. I just completed my doctorate degree a few weeks ago from Space Physics Laboratory, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, Thiruvananthapuram, by defending my thesis in Cochin University of Science and Technology. I was working on the study of Venus using GMRT in collaboration with NCRA and notably Guvind. Uh, in fact, the work has uh, work can be said to be the brainchild of professor and uh, I was a regular visiting student in NCRI and I used to be I used to interact with almost on a daily basis during those days. Uh, he was uh, my unofficial mentor and supervisor in NCRI and his uh, passion and enthusiasm for science has always uh, fascinated me. Uh, in the earlier days of my work uh, results were really hard to come by and I started losing motivation but he always helped me with advice and tips to keep going and to try different approaches. Uh, I really missed him for my open defense as he passed away two weeks before the event. Uh, and I wish may his soul rest in peace. And I thank uh, everyone from NCRA for giving me this opportunity to speak something uh, regarding uh, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nitin. Uh, we'll hear now from uh, uh, Professor Tony Beasley, um, who is the director of NRAO in the United States. Um, Tony, please go ahead. Okay, um, on behalf of the staff of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and all of Govan's friends and colleagues in the, in the US astronomy community, Please allow me to extend our deepest sympathies to his family and express our sense of loss at his passing. We all remember Govid for his decades of friendship, his commitment to international collaborations, and his innovative concepts for radio telescopes, starting with UTI and eventually GMRT. I remember many great conversations with Govid at SKA meetings in the 1990s. And as SKA begins construction uh, in the last few months, last year or two, I'm sure he was very, very proud. And I, I like this picture you've got up of Govan because that's the way I remember him, always smiling like that. Uh, every day, all of us, we're all building on the contributions of those that came before us. And as we see today from all of these great talks, um, Govan had a huge impact on the field, both in India and all around the world over many decades. And he was clearly a, a very positive force in the lives of many, many people. We will miss him. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Uh, so we'll now just uh, try uh, Jerry Padmanabhan once again. Jerry, please go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? 
Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm Janardhan Padmanabhan from the Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad. I first visited the UT radio telescope as an IASC summer student in 1981. And it was a truly awe-inspiring and unforgettable experience. I remember standing there looking upon for the first time at the magnificent telescope, fully 530 meters long and 30 meters wide. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jerry? Yeah, there's still an echo, a strong kind of. Um, we don't hear it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Stretching the. Yeah. Can you hear me? I mean, it's. Yeah, we hear you clearly. Please go ahead. Yeah, stretching down a mountain slope with the sun glinting off its stainless steel reflector wires. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. You're very clear to us. Please continue. Yeah, should I carry on? Yes, please. Okay, shall I just carry on yes. with my, uh, and my mind flashed back to the time I first heard of Professor Govind Swarup as a schoolboy of 12 years. I was privileged to grow up at the Raman Research Institute quarters in Wiley Kaval, Bangalore, as my father worked first with Professor C. V. Raman, then with Professor V. Radhakrishna. I recall a get together for Deepavali where many scientists like Professor Radhakrishnan, Professor G. Srinivasan, Professor N. B. G. Sharma, Professor Anand Ramaya, and many others were discussing the ORT. And I was awestruck by overhearing the story of how the telescope was built and the drive and enthusiasm of Professor Swaroop and his small band of co-workers who had put together the ORT. I dare say that my career path was decided in that instant. And many years later, I was invited by Professor Govind Swaroop to talk about my PhD work at NCRA. He attended this talk and asked so many questions that I remember all the details of that one talk even today. His eyes shone bright like burning coals and his enthusiasm and energy shone through them like beacons. Interacting with him left one almost breathless. I later worked with the GMRT and had many, many interactions with Govind. In the passing away of Govind, the pioneer of radio astronomy in India, our nation has lost a great son and the scientific community has lost a truly great scientist. It has been said that to be immortal, one has to either do something that one can write about or write something that one can read. Govind has done both in ample measure and will always be remembered for being a true leader of men, a builder of institutions, an excellent scientist and teacher, and above all, a wonderful human being. May his soul rest in everlasting peace. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. I'm glad uh, it finally worked out. And now we will hear from Professor Vijay Raghavan, the principal scientific advisor uh, to the government of India. Uh, thank you very much, Jairam. Um, it's a rare honor to be the last but one speaker at this uh, memorable meeting. And it's been absolutely wonderful to hear everyone talk about every aspect of Govan's life, uh, from being a scientist, uh, astronomer, a builder of telescopes, and someone who's interacted so closely with his community. My own perspective, my personal perspective, comes from being a biologist uh, at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, uh, which I joined in 1978 as a graduate student. Uh, it was quite extraordinary at that time. The, um, we were all part, the molecular biology unit was part of what was known as the physics faculty. And uh, the molecular biology unit and the radio astronomy group shared an office, the secretary to both Govind Swaroop and uh, Obeid Siddiqui was the same person, Harish. And therefore, we as students had a great interaction with uh, radio astronomy. As we all know, the secretaries to the boss know everything. Uh, and therefore, our education in radio astronomy came from Harish initially, but Govind himself was deeply accessible. 
the West Canteen was a place where we all met and um, Obed, Govind, several of the radio astronomers and the biologists would often sit together over tea or lunch. It's important to keep in mind that the travails and uh, ambitions of molecular biology were in many ways similar to that of astronomy uh, and astrophysics at that time. Uh, and therefore we found a common bond in talking uh, about those kinds of issues in a sea of physicists and uh, with a few mathematicians thrown in. And it was interesting. Biologists are those who look at telescopes from the wrong end, but other than that, uh, everything is very similar about these uh, two areas of work. When the National Center for Biological Sciences was being formed, there was a discussion uh, amongst faculty members in the physics faculty. And this is not to say anything critical about the physics faculty at that time. The physics faculty is an aggregation of extraordinary individuals and aggregates of that kind, faculty uh, meetings all over the world, very rapidly regress to the mean uh, of the lowest possible consensus. So there was a strong view that the National Center for Biological Sciences should not be formed and if it were to be formed, it should speedily leave Bangalore. And if it were to leave Bangalore, then all of biology, uh, sorry, leave Bombay. And if it were to leave Bombay, then all of biology should leave Bombay. The sole person at the highest level of seniority in the Institute at that time, who strongly advised against that approach was Govind. Govind was one of the strongest supporters of the formation of NCBS. The directors of the Institute uh, then and later were strong supporters. The Department of Atomic Energy was a strong supporter and therefore the NCBS was formed. And amazingly, after a lot of running around, it was to be located in Bangalore. At that time, the uh, UT telescope people were beginning to move towards um, um, uh, forming the GMRT. Govan's offices and labs at the um, Indian Institute of Science, uh, what was known as the uh, Radio Astronomy Building, uh, was becoming empty. And he uh, generously told Obed that we could move in there and set up shop, which we did, thanks also to the generosity of CNR Rao, who allowed that in a, you know, a, a letter was written by Obed. And I think by the time the letter was opened, CNR Rao had approved that in no small measure to the way Govind had worked in relationship with IISC. So Govind was deeply instrumental and helpful in the formation of um, the NCBS. But also the entire office staff who were there working for radio astronomy, uh, Mr. Sardevan and several others stayed on to help in the formation of NCBS. And they brought in the culture of uh, GMRT into NCBS, which was one of you know, constantly being ambitious, challenging authority in a gentle but firm way and getting things done in a very complex system. These were all invaluable learning advices. At that stage, when we were uh, not given sufficient uh, supports, uh, Govind was brutally frank. He told both the uh, TIFR uh, directors, as well as the DAE, that biology is critically important and you will get monkeys if you give them peanuts. And he was a very strong proponent of increased support for science. A month or so before he passed away, he gave me a phone call. I was surprised to receive a phone call in which he and I discussed about vaccines against COVID, uh, the SARS -CoV uh, coronavirus. And he was talking about how the vaccine would be prioritized. Would elderly people be, get priority? Would frontline workers get priority? And this was absolutely stunning to have that conversation. And I replied saying that I promised that I'd be in touch as vaccines roll out. Unfortunately, that is not uh, feasible. So we'll miss him very, very greatly in every way. But you know, it's difficult to have a conversation with him, but an imaginary conversation with us deciphering what he's likely to say will be a touchstone for what we decide to do as we go along. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, uh, sort of concluding uh, remarks, which really have sort of given us a different uh, perspective on Govind than what we've heard before.
And that brings us uh, uh, more or less to the end uh, of our uh, program. What we uh, will have now, I think, is that um, Professor Swaroop San Bipin will speak a few words on behalf of the family. So Bipin, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Jairam. Um, on behalf of my mother, uh, Bina, uh, sister Anju, and the entire family, um, I would like to really thank all the speakers and the broader scientific community for the very touching tributes and condolences. It's really gratifying to hear about uh, his unique ability to inspire amazingly talented people who shared a vision and joined him in the relentless march forward to make India a world leader in radio astronomy. And also to hear about the deep enduring friendships he forged along the way. A big thanks also to uh, Yeshwan Gupta and Jairam Chenglur and the entire NCRA team for organizing this event and for including our family in this event. Again, a very big thank you to everyone. Thank you, Vipin. And with that, uh, we come to the end of our program. Uh, thank you all for joining.